Good morning and welcome in for another HGV class one video with myself, Darren. And this is a day in life for HGV driver in the UK. It's a nice and very, very fresh morning today. So what I've done is hooked up to the trailer, always make sure the clip is secured. Always double check it. For the trailer check, some of the things looking for is no damage on the curtains, all these straps are in good condition. The side guards are in really good condition and the tire tread as well, making sure they're all nice and secure. After you hooked up to the trailer, go around and then do a second check with the lights switched onto the cab, just to make sure all your LEDs, your lights, everything is all working. Oh my word, that wind chill this morning is absolutely freezing. Just when you think it's warming up, I got in the car again, two degrees or one degree or something, frozen over, fingers are frozen as well. The time currently is half past five and I'm due to get to my first collection for 10 to six in the morning, 7.8 miles away in St. Helens. If you're looking for a good sat nav, for what's not gonna break your balance, the link below is for this sat nav. And I would recommend it. I've never had any issues with it and it does everything you need to do at truck sat nav does, including live updates as well. The interior light has gone out again. I don't know why, every so often it'll work for six weeks and then it'll stop working for two weeks and it will work again. It's really, really intermittent this one. So LED strips are in effect. Now, I don't know whether to go for the blue or for the red. I might go for that one for now. Nope, change man, blue. It's a little bit more relaxed. I do get some questions asking, how do you check your brake lights when you're on a trailer because it's so far away from you? Well, if it's dark enough, you're not too bad. You just reverse up to a wall or something like so. And when you push your pedal, you can see the lights in the mirror. Same for the other side as well and reset that trailer height, just pushing that button and then the green and that'll level out the trailer for us. Just in case I'm ever going underneath like a 1412 bridge and my trailer's 148 and then it could be a little bit too high then and hit that bridge. Definitely one thing I don't want to be doing is a bridge strike. One thing I do like about these new trailers that SSL currently have is when you're reversing down the road, they've got these lights that activate. And when it's dark, they are so, so helpful. They really are. Every trailer needs these lights on the side. The time is now 20 to seven already, and I've got about a two hour drive now until we get to Barnsley. And that's what we're taking this load to. With the trailer lights, just to give you a little bit of an example what a driver can actually see in the mirror. If I was reversing with a normal trailer, this is what I would see. However, with these trailers, with the lights, how much better is that? Honestly, it's so much better. Every trailer needs them. Just arrived here now, quarter past nine, and I've got 19 pallets to get taken off by this place. I think it's gonna be a back door tip, so I've opened the back doors already. I'm just waiting for the gate to be opened, and then I can get onto the base to get unloaded. That was a nice and quick tip. Quarter past 10 at the moment, and I've got about another two hours to get back to Warrington area. And my first collection is going to be in Nutsford, believe it or not. To get over to Nutsford, where my collection is, I'm looking at about two hours driving time and about 80 miles, give or take. 
Uh, I've got the setup at the moment just to get me onto the M1. After that, I'll just turn it off and use my own knowledge for it. Uh, the route I'm going to take in as well is going up the M1, jump onto the M62. Hopefully, Leeds and Bradford area should be okay. I'm going to take my break on the M1 though before I do get to Leeds and Bradford. So it'll be around 12 o'clock, give or take. I'll be at the Leeds and Bradford area on the M62. And then I'll follow the M62 down, I shall say westbound. Just make sure where that car was going then. Follow it westbound until I come down to the M60 ring road. I'm going to follow that as well. Going past Stockport. And then I'll come off on the M56. Then pop off the M56, Ultrangum, I'll take that little bypass road and I'll take me straight down to Nutsford then. Let's make sure I'm in the right lane. M1 northbound. That's quite a big digger there in front. Really big one, I wonder what the weight of it is. I think that'd be quite a cool job, moving all the industrial heavy machinery around, such as the tractors and diggers and whatnot. I think it'd be quite interesting that. Getting them on and off. Be a little bit fun as well, wouldn't it, if you're moving tractors and stuff. But some of the things that you see on the backs of trailers, bloody hell, you see some really, really big machinery, don't you? seen somebody moving a big like a big canal bowl type thing but they massive it was oh that is very nice Ford Mustang I absolutely love doing driving as a grey best of luck as well to anybody that's going in for their class one or class two jobs if it's first time doing a driving as a career, I'm sure you will absolutely love it once you just get used to long hours. I know it sounds quite bad, doesn't it, like getting used to the long hours and stuff, but it does go quick. It really does do quick. So my sat nav is actually trying to take me over Woodhead Pass. If it was a nice summer's day, I probably would go over. But the weather's not really that great at the moment. It's quite windy up on the top. So yeah, I'm gonna go all the way around for today. I'm not in a rush, so it's all right. This afternoon as well, after all my collections, I've got to take the truck over to uh, MAN in Trafford Park so I can get its service done, get the MOT sorted out. Hopefully it'll come back no issues on it because it's going in with no issues well except for the interior light that's messed up again hasn't it so i need to try and get that fixed Let's see if sat there for updates the big diggers out running there <laughs> I can't get into the slow lane I've got my indicator on but there's a car literally by the rear axle on the trailer I don't know why they're sitting there I think it's a good idea yeah move back a little bit for me structures on trucks you know like this one here looks like it's part of an office block of some sort could be waiting there for an escort maybe after his break sorry if you might need an escort for that looks quite long doesn't it just coming 
past the Halifax now on the M62. Because um, I'm quite high up at the moment, I'm nearly at the moors. And my word, did you feel the wind battering the side of the trailer? Because I've got no weight whatsoever on the trailer, it's completely empty. And we've pretty strong winds coming at the moment, you can feel it knocking you from left to right. It's a little bit of an uneasy feeling if I'm being honest with you.
reason why I didn't want to go up Woodhead. Woodhead pass to be an absolute nightmare going up and down there. It'd be a lot worse than this to wait until that way. Just coming up to the M62 summit, highest motorway in England. 372 meters, 1,221 feet above sea level. Find some height that. Time has just hit two o'clock and I'm done over at Knutsford. Collected 15 pallets from our client. Now on to the next one. Appleton Industry Estate for I think it is one or two pallets. It's in that little tight yard that we've got to like use next door to try and spin around. <laughs> Hopefully there's not an artist doing a the delivery there, it might be a bit of a tight reverse into the car park area should be okay though either way hoping to get there for probably about 25 past 2 give or take uh, where's she off now she go open that door yeah even though the wind's picking up again feels really warm at the moment keep getting a little bit like hot flushes not from coming down with anything feels like it a little bit for being honest saying that little man has been in nursery hasn't he for two days this week he's probably picked something up again because every time he goes to the nursery he picks up the plague every single week it's ridiculous how often that kid brings germs home I keep saying to Leanne, I think they go around just licking each other. It's like a petri dish. But he seems okay in himself though. So if he has got something, it's probably like a stealth bug. I should be okay either way. Uh, it's driving through Nutsford Village coming up. Got to be a little bit more cautious because they are quite narrow these roads. So I'm taking out a little bit of the white line. I've got it so I'm pretty much right on the white line. Enough space for the other cars to still get past. But I don't want to be hitting my mirrors in any of these hedges going past. I thought that van was going to pull out in front of that car then. It's a nice little place, so Nutsford. I've said this a few times now on the vlogs, but there's a nice little restaurant in here. I want to take Leanne to sometime. It looks like it used to be like an old church of some sort. It's like a really big building, big glass wall. As you drive past it, you can see right inside of it. It looks really nice. Nice and fancy. I'm hoping this one in Appleton is going to be the last collection for the day as I've still got to take the unit over to Trafford Park in Manchester and I want to try and beat the rush hour traffic dropping it off around Barton Bridge area it just gets absolutely chaotic when it's traffic I'm not too sure if it's going to be another driver though one of the class 2 drivers or one of the class 1 drivers if their vehicle is also going in for service then I might be sharing the trip home in one of the higher cars that they got. That's it. Which is that, I think it's a Volkswagen up. It's basically a Volkswagen version of the smart car. It's so small, <laughs> compact. I don't know how on earth people have them as a car to own if you'd like to do shopping or anything. I mean, I bet it's great on fuel, 
because it's probably like a one liter or something. But the boot space, there's literally, I can fit my bag in there. That's probably about it. There's not a lot of space whatsoever. I remember making a class two delivery to Nutsford town centre in the middle of like the main street and it was Christmas time and I was driving through <laughs> generally my mirrors I had to put my fashion side mirror in because it was so close to the wall and on my driver's side I had a couple of cars parked up so I was inches away from them and I had like my whole upper body out the window to make sure I wasn't scratching any of the cars driving past this is when I was with H&M doing class 2 driving and I'm driving through and all I can hear on the roof part is the Christmas lights and I had a, an image in my head of all these Christmas lights getting caught on the truck and I've just ripped the whole of the town's Christmas decorations down like a big chaos and everything behind the truck <laughs> like just driving down the street you see Christmas lights getting ripped off everywhere and there's like Santa's sledge getting tangled up getting dragged along <laughs> oh it was an absolute nightmare got through in the end I didn't damage anything so everything was all good but oof, could easily damage stuff driving through that part definitely needs to be like a seven ton truck or three and a half ton van even I think it's more ideal isn't it been speaking to Scott in the office and this is going to be my last collection of the day yay so all I need to do is nip it to here pick up one or two pallets back to the yard empty off drop the trailer and then drive solo to Trafford Park to the MAN site and there's another driver that's going to meet me there so whoever gets there first We'll then do the vehicle checks on the car that we're going to be using and then we'll drive back nice and easy and then that should be me done hopefully for about five o'clock give it take it's currently 20 past two at the moment so two and a half hours it shouldn't really take that long get traffic and back uh, their yard looks empty as well so that's a good sign get in there spin it around no problems oh nice Bentley so it's just by the Mark Thompson site this Yeah, for the end of that, I haven't caught a corner too much. Oh, I hate this section around here because there's a massive pothole here. You've probably got a field bouncing around in a second. I'll just go over it slowly. It's one of them puddles that are a lot deeper than what you think. <laughs> if you drive over it thinking it's like a shallow puddle, bloody hell, it's like three foot deep. Just bounces you around the cab. <laughs> I do keep playing around with the idea of getting my own truck though. I would like to have my own one. Ideally, I would love to have like a Scania V8 and stuff, but practical. I'd probably go for MAN. Start off with a rental truck first. So I'm not spending 30 grand on a truck and then getting it repaired, getting it road legal, etc. etc. At least if you get a higher truck, majority of them actually will come with like the higher agreements, don't they? Where they'd look after the maintenance of the trucks as well. So if you break anything, or it breaks itself, shall I say. And you're kind of covered there, aren't you? A little bit. So I've got parked right into the corner. Just so other vehicles can get past. 
Back at the yard now, five past three, so we're making good time and good progress at the moment. Just need to get tipped off and then head over towards MAN Manchester. That last collection was probably one of the quickest ones that I've done in a long time. It was ready already, on the forklift, guy waiting, opened up back doors, straight on the back doors, didn't have to do the curtains, off, gone, straight away. A little bit of traffic on the M6 northbound, because, well, it's the M6 northbound around Warrington area. It's always crap around there, isn't it? And now, yeah, time just to get to Trafford. Hopefully the traffic won't be too bad, though, going towards Trafford, down the M62, because, well, it's getting towards rush hour, but on the way back, it's going to be chaos. Just arrived at Manit Trafford Park. It's about 20 past four, give or take, and it feels like it's another storm on the horizon. Pissing it down now. <laughs> That's the little beast that we're driving back in. And for the boot, you can pretty much fit a watering can in. <laughs> and now we're playing a little bit of the waiting game, waiting for Mick. He should be here very shortly in his class two. And then we can go home. Well, when I say go home, back to the yard and then get my car and then go home. <laughs> and here he is, 20 minutes later. <laughs> Go on, bud. Before I forget as well, I'd like to say a big congratulations to Scott, one of my subscribers who passed their class one today. Good luck in the future, mate. I hope it all works out for you and I hope you don't look back on it. Enjoy your life as a trucker. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call a wrap. The day is done. It is now six o'clock coming up to. It took an hour and 15 minutes to get back from Trafford Park over to Hayduck and I'm going to call it a day on the video so thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy it don't forget to hit that like comment subscribe and I'll see you again next time as always stay safe out there keep on trucking bye for now